Hello, thank you so much for joining our webinar today, Three Solutions to a Successful Method Transfer. Your speaker for today is Berkshire Sterile Manufacturing's Quality Control Method Transfer and Validation Manager, Judy LaPlante. Judy has several years of experience in analytical method transfers in pharmaceutical manufacturing, and she currently oversees all method transfers and validations for over 120 client projects at Berkshire Sterile. She will be a knowledgeable resource for you today. Judy, you now have the floor. Thank you, Sarah, for the introduction. Okay, let's get right into it. What is a method transfer? A method transfer is a GMP process of qualifying a receiving laboratory to use an analytical method that originated in a transferring laboratory. The process is intended to ensure and document that the method performs as intended within the receiving laboratory environment. Method transfers can occur between multiple internal and or external labs, and this may or may not involve the original lab that developed and validated the method. An example of this is a procedure that may be developed and validated in a research and development lab, then transferred internally to the same company's manufacturing site, and again later transferred to an external contract organization. This process can take months or even years. The scope of a transfer can range from a simple demonstration of satisfactory repeatability with known samples to cases where a complete validation is necessary at the receiving laboratory. Let's start off with some common strategies to avoid. The bad fit method. Transferring a method to the receiving laboratory that does not have the equipment, training, experience, or capability to execute the method. If the receiving laboratory needs to purchase an instrument to qualify and transfer a method, Time needs to be built into the schedule to purchase, qualify, and train on the use of the new instrumentation. Bad fit methods can also include limited access to critical reagents, such as standard materials as well as reagents used to execute the method and prepare solutions used. When reagents are in critical supply, that leaves a lot of pressure on the receiving laboratory to execute right first time without allowing opportunity to train individuals on the method or the instrumentation. Another common strategy to avoid is the hope and pray method. This is using a method that has variable repeatability and often occurs with methods that are rushed and not well vetted. The final common strategy to avoid is the tightrope method. This is a method that has an extremely narrow margin of error and requires extensive analyst training to perform correctly. We typically see the tightrope method fall into play when there are several steps involved in a method and small volumes of material are used or the criteria are artificially too tight to fall within a very close range to their target specification. In these types of methods, any small deviation would result in a failure this is similar to how one wrong step could cause a tightrope walker to fall. Some common method transfer frustrations. When insufficient information is contained within the method to be transferred, including special handling instructions. When there are poorly or no defined material specifications, this will lead to challenges when drafting methods and protocols. If an insufficient quantity of material is available to complete the method feasibility and transfer work. Rush timing to evaluate and transfer a method. An expectation that prior method development and use of the method identified all flaws. Now, what do we hope you will take away from this webinar? The three solutions for a successful method transfer that will save you time and money and what you can do to streamline your method transfer and reduce quality errors. Let's talk about the solutions for a successful method transfer. Communication. There should be open lines of communication and sharing of information between both parties. Specifications. The specifications should be meaningful and appropriate for the method. Materials. Any standards and materials necessary 
to evaluate and use the method should be readily available. Communication with the receiving lab should happen early and often. Many methods fail to transfer due to miscommunication and misinterpretation of the method instructions received. This is at the root of the most common issues. For example, a method may require the analyst to prepare a 1 ppm solution. However, it is not defined as either gravimetric or volumetric solution preparation. This may cause differences in the receiving laboratory's results. Feedback and discussion of initial feasibility analyses at the receiving laboratory is necessary. And method transfers should not be treated as a routine list of checkoffs. By trying to use a one-size-fits-all approach, critical details may be missed. Preparation of a transfer package from the transferring lab and a gap analysis between the labs will aid in the success of the method transfer. A method transfer package should include method parameters, material specifications, including the specifications of the materials used to perform the analysis, as well as the release criteria of the material to be tested, any previous analytical data available, previous validation, method transfer information, and the associated data, example chromatograms, spectra, raw data, sample preparations, calculations, any special handling instructions, and anything else you think may be necessary to successfully evaluate the method. Specifications submitted to the receiving lab should be meaningful and appropriate. The specifications should be based on a method's day-to-day -day performance. Evaluation of the method over a period of days and using multiple analysts. This will give you an idea of the method's inherent variability. An evaluation of any method bias between the receiving lab and the transferring lab should be done. If one lab tests on the high end of agreement criteria and the other on the low end, evaluate a root cause and a move to eliminate any bias. This work ahead of time could aid in reducing material testing out of specification or out of trend in future analyses. Specifications should be based on the use of the method and the materials. Evaluation of impurities, limit of detection, and limit of quantitation is not necessary when the method is solely a concentration assay. How to choose the right specifications. What information do you need? Evaluate the needs of the results, the limitations of the method, and the end use and dosing of the materials. How will you use the result? Will the results be used to make processing adjustments? If so, a wide acceptance range or reporting for informational purposes may be appropriate. When choosing the right specifications, the following considerations should be made. Sample manipulation. Methods that require significant sample manipulation and treatment are not typically capable of repeatedly reporting to very tight criteria. Dosing considerations. Drug product that is used in very small dosage quantities may have a larger acceptable window for impurity tolerance than a drug product that is used in large dosage quantities. When transferring a method to a receiving laboratory, there are questions you should know the answers to. Are the same manufacturer and model of instrumentation available at the receiving lab that are used at the transferring lab? Are the chemicals and consumables needed for the method readily available and in sufficient quantity for evaluation of the method as well as any method transfer work? Are there specific grades of the chemicals that must be used? Is there a specific vendor the reagent or chemical must be purchased from? Are there any special handling instructions and or storage of the materials that is critical to the success of the method? Other things to keep in mind when transferring a method. Time isn't always money. By rushing a method transfer into a receiving lab, there may ultimately be delays due to missing information or sufficient time to properly ensure feasibility. Ensure clear method instructions. 
outline any sample preparations rather than simply state a solution concentration that is to be used. Clearly define how a solution should be mixed if it is critical to the success of the method evaluation. Consider training. Is the method so complex or contains such fine nuances to successfully evaluate? Is hands-on training for the originating lab to the receiving lab necessary? This needs to be accounted for in the overall time frame. To review, the three solutions to a successful method transfer are communication, open lines of communication and sharing of information is critical, specifications that are meaningful and appropriate for the method, and materials, any standards and materials that are necessary should be readily available. Make sure you have your transfer package complete and in order, as well as lines of communication established and scheduled for routine sharing of information for the greatest opportunity for a successful method transfer. I believe now would be a good time to open up for questions. Thank you, Judy. In just a moment, we're going to switch over the screen so we can display your questions and Judy will answer these. If you haven't already, please put in your questions. Send those to our team. We're going to mute ourselves uh, briefly as we switch over. The first question is, what is your greatest issue you've seen with method transfers? I would see I would say that some of our biggest issues that we have seen um, would be incomplete information uh, sent to the receiving laboratory. Um, poorly developed methods will also uh, cause issue with method transfers, as well as inf insufficient standards and critical reagents being available uh, for use at the receiving laboratory. Our next question is, what's the easiest method to transfer? Uh, I would say that the easiest method to transfer would be a well-vetted, well-developed method. Um, give yourself time to make sure that robustness has been evaluated. Um, multiple days, weeks, uh, multiple analysts uh, to make sure that it is repeatable within a single lab to try to, before you try to send off to a receiving lab. What's the average time you should expect from your CMO to complete a method transfer? Average timing can range depending on the complexity and technique of the method. Uh, on average, I would expect anywhere from two to three months for a complete transfer of the method and materials. How much does pipetting play into a method transfer? Well, pipetting can play into a method transfer. Um, it's not necessarily the most significant uh, problem, but can cause issues when transferring a method to a receiving laboratory. Um, technique, if there's a special technique or special materials of construction that are necessary, that will need to be communicated to the receiving laboratory. Do I prefer volumetric or gravimetric dilutions? Uh, personal preference would be a volumetric dilution um, as this is more time efficient uh, and quicker to get through in the laboratory. Um, gravimetric or volumetric dilutions should reasonably produce the same results. Um, so for a good method, it should not matter uh, which, which route you go, gravimetric or volumetric. Uh, you may choose one over the other based on material compatibility um, and availability of uh, chemicals and standards to be used. That's all for the questions. Thank you for joining the webinar today.